Okay, welcome back everyone. Cube's live coverage of VMware Explorer 2022. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE. Two sets, three days of live coverage. Dave Vellante's here, Lisa Martin, Dave Nicholson, all hosts of theCUBE. Uh, 12 interviews today, we just, we're rocking and rolling, getting down to the end of the show as we wind down and look back and look at the future. We've got Steven Jones here, he's the general manager of the VMware Cloud on AWS. He's with Amazon Web Service, Steven Jones. Welcome to theCUBE. Thanks, John. Welcome Great. back, CUBE alumni. I've been on many times going back to 2015. Yeah, pleasure to be here. <laughs> Great to Thank see you, you again. John. Thanks for coming on. Um, obviously, 10 years at AWS, what a ride that's been. Come it's on, fantastic. tell me, it's yeah. been crazy. Wow, learned a lot of stuff along the way, right? Uh, I mean, we, we, we knew uh, that, that there was a lot of opportunity, right? Customers wanting the agility and flexibility of, of the cloud. Um, and and we, we still think it's early days, right? I mean, you, you'll hear Andy say that, Adam will say that, but it really is, right? Yeah. If you look at even just the amount of spend that's being spent on, on clouds, it's in the billions, right? And the amount of, uh, of uh, spend in IT is still in the trillions. So there's, there's a long way to go. Um, and customers are pushing us hard, obviously. It's, it's been interesting, a lot going on with VMware, obviously around with them, obviously changing the strategy with their, their third generation and their narrative. Obviously the Broadcom thing is going on around them. And, and 10 years at AWS, we've been, we've been um, this will be our ninth year, no, 10th year at reInvent mm -hmm. coming up uh, for us. So, but it's 10 years of everything at Amazon. 10 <laughs> years of S3, 10 years of EC2. So if you look at the, the marks of time, now the history books are starting to be written about Amazon Web Services. You know, it's about 10 years of full throttle cube hyperscaler in action. I mean, I'm talking about real growth, like <clears throat> hardcore. For sure, I'll give you just one anecdote. So when I first joined, I think we had maybe two EC2 instances back in the day, and the maximum amount of memory you could produce into one of these machines was I think 128 gig of RAM. Fast forward to today, you literally can get a, a machine with 24 terabytes of RAM. Just in, insane amounts, right? I, my, my son, who's a gamer, uh, tells me he's got 16 gig in his, in his PC. He thinks that's a lot, right? So, <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> not, excited that, about that. That's not even on his, uh, on his uh, graphics card. I mean, he's, he, I know it's coming next. The GPU, I mean, just the, I mean, all the like hard, Graviton, right? I mean, all the hardware innovation that you guys have done. I mean, look at, every, it's cha everyone's changed their strategy to copy AWS, Nitro, Dave Vellante, and mm. I talk about this all the time, especially with James Hamilton and the team over there, Peter DeSantos. These guys have, are constantly, at, going at the atoms and innovating at the, at the level. I mean, that, that's how hardcore it is over there right now. I mean, and the advances on the silicon and graviton performance-wise is crazy. I mean, so what is that enabling? So well, given that's continuing, you guys are continuing to do great work there uh, on the CapEx side. We think that's enabling another set of new, net new applications because we're starting to see new things emerge. We saw Snowflake come on, a customer of AWS, mm -hmm. Refactor, the data warehouse. They call it a data cloud. You're starting to see Goldman Sachs, you see Capital One, you see enterprise customers building on top of AWS and building a cloud business without spending the CapEx. That's exactly right. Yeah. And uh, so you mentioned Graviton, so Graviton is one of our fastest growing compute families now. And you, know, you mentioned a couple of ISVs and partners of ours who are leaning in heavily on porting their own software. Um, at reInvent, uh, Adam announced that we're working with SAP to, to help them port their HANA Cloud, which is a, a database as a service offering. HANA, yeah. flagship, <laughs> uh, to Graviton as well. So it's, it's definitely changing. And I think, you know, one of the, uh, and we're going to circle back to VMworks as kind of a point to this, this conversation, <laughs> is, yes. that, is that if you look at the trends, right, okay, VMware really tried hard to do cloud, and they had a good shot at it. vCloud Air, but it just, they didn't have the momentum that you guys had at AWS. We saw a lot of, a lot of other stragglers try to do cloud, they fell off the road. Um, OpenStack, HP, and the list goes on and on, I don't want to get into that, but the point is, as you guys become more powerful, and you're open, right, so you have open ecosystem, mm -hmm. you have people now coming back, taking advantage, and refactoring, and, and picking up where they left off. VMware was the, one of the first companies that actually said, you know what, Pat Gelsinger said, and I was there, let's clear up the positioning, let's go all in with AWS. That's right. At that time, 2016. Yeah, this was new for us, for sure. And then now, that's set the standard, now everybody else is kind of doing it. Where is the VMware cloud relationship right now? How's that going? Um, obviously it's worked. It's working well, very well. And I mean, we're celebrating, I think we made the announcement, what, five years ago at this conference? Um, yeah, 2016, so I mean, it's, it's been a tremendous ride. The best part are the customers who are coming and adopting and, and proving to us that our vision back then uh, was the right vision, 
Um, and, and, and what's been different, I think, about this relationship, uh, and it was new for us, was that we, we purposely went after a jointly engineered solution. This wasn't, hey, we've got a, a, a customer or a partner that's just going to run and build something on us. This is something where we both bring uh, muscle and we actually build a, a joint offering together. And talk, so talk that, about, that's the main difference. Yeah, no, and, that, and that's been working. But now here at this show, if you, look at, if you squint through the multi-cloud thing, which is like just, I think, positioning for you know, what could happen in, in a post-Broadcom right. uh, broad, uh, broad world, the cloud native has traction. They're Tanzu, uh, where customers were leaning in. So their enterprise customer is what I call the classic IT, you know, mainstream enterprise, which you guys have been doing a lot of business with. They're now thinking, okay, I'm going to go on, continue to accelerate on, in the public cloud, but I'm going to have hybrid on-premise as well. You guys have that solution now. They're going to need cloud native, and we were speculating that VMware is probably not going to be able to get them all of it, um, and, and that there's a lot more cloud native options. As customers want more cloud native, how do you see that piece on Amazon's side? Because there's a lot of benefits between the VMware cloud on AWS and the services that you guys have natively in your cloud. So we see customers really taking advantage of the AWS goodness as well as expanding the cloud side at VMware cloud on AWS. Yeah, there's probably two ways I would look at this, right? So, so one is um, the combination of VMware cloud on AWS uh, and then both native services just generally brings more options to customers. And so, typically what we're seeing now is customers are just able to move much faster, especially as it comes to data center evacuations, migrating all their assets, right? So, it used to be that, um, and still some customers, they're like, I've, I've got to think through my entire portfolio of applications and decide what to refactor, and the only way I can move it to cloud is to actually refactor it into some net new application. More and more we're actually seeing customers They've got their assets. A lot of them are still on premises in a VMware estate, mm -hmm. right? They can move those super quick and then modernize those. And so I think where you'll see VMware and AWS very aligned is on this, this idea of migrate now. You need to get the benefits of TCO and, and the agility that comes with yeah. being in the cloud and then modernize. You know, so we took it a step further, uh, which is, um, and I think VMware would agree here too, but all of the, the myriad of services, I think it's 200 plus now, uh, AWS native services are for use right alongside any asset a customer wants to run in VMware. And so we have examples of customers that are doing just that. And that's, that's how you guys see the native and, and VMware cloud integrating in. Yeah, that's, that's important because, there's, I mean, if, I always joke about, you know, we've been here 12 years listening <laughs> in the hallways and stuff, you know, on the bus to the event last night, walking in the parties and whatnot, listening in the streets. There's kind of two conversations that rise right to the top, and I want to get your reaction to this, Stephen, because this seems to be representative of this demographic here at VMware uh, um, conference. There's conversations around ransomware and storage and dedupe and recovery. It's all a lot of those happen. Yeah. Clearly a big crowd here that care about, you know, Veeam and NetApp and storage and like making sure stuff's secure and not air gapped and a lot of that kind of, I call it nerdy conversations. And then the other one is, okay, I got to get the cloud story right. So there's kind of the operational security and then there's like, okay, what's my path to true cloud? I need to get this moving. I need to have better applications. My company is the application now, not IT serves some sort of back office function. It's yeah. like my company is completely using technology as its business. So the app is the business. Um, so that means everything's technology driven, not de departmental silos. So there's a, that's what I call the true cloud conversation. How do, you, how do you see that evolving? Because VMware customers are now going there. And I won't say, I won't say they're behind, but they're certainly going there faster than ever before. I think, I, think uh, I mean, it's an interesting, con it's an interesting uh, way to put it, and I, I would completely agree. I think uh, it's, it's very clear that I think a lot of customer companies are actually being disrupted, right? And they have to move fast and reinvent themselves. You said the app is now becoming the company, right? I mean, if, if you look at where, uh, not too many years back, uh, there were you know, big companies like Netflix that were born in the cloud, right? Uh, Airbnb, they're disruptors. There's, that's the app. Right, that's the app. Yeah. So I, I would exactly agree, and, and that's who uh, other companies are competing with, and so they have to move quickly. Um, you talked about some, some technology that allows them to do that, right? So this week we announced uh, the general availability of uh, a NetApp ONTAP solution. It's been available on AWS for some time as a fully managed FSX uh, uh, storage solution, uh, but now customers can actually leverage it with 
uh, with VMC. Now, why is that important? Well, uh, there's tens of thousands of customers running VMware on-premises still. Uh, there's thousands of them that are actually using NetApp filers, right, mm -hmm. NetApp, NetApp filers, and uh, the same enterprise features like replication, dedupe, like you were talking about, um, and snap and clone, those types of things, can be done now within the VMware estate um, on AWS. What's even better is they can actually move faster. So consider replicating all this, you know, petabytes and petabytes of data that are in these filers from on-premises into AWS, this, this NetApp service, and then connect it, connecting that up to the VMC option. So it just allows customers much, much uh, you, got, you guys have always been customer focused. Like every time I sat down with Andy Jassy and then last year with Adam, same thing. We work back and forth. Now it's, I know it's kind of a canned answer on some of the questions from media, but, but they do really care. I've had those conversations. You guys do work backwards from the customers. You actually have documents called working backwards. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that I observed, we talked about it here um, yesterday on theCUBE, was the observations of reInvent versus say VMworld Now Explore is VMworld's ecosystem was very partner centric in the sense of the partners needed to rely on VMware and the customers came here for both more of the partners, not so much VMware in the sense there wasn't as much many, many announcements. Um, can compare that to the past say eight years of reInvent where there's so much Amazon action going on. The partners, I won't say stay as a second, as a back seat to Amazon, but the, the attendees go there generally for what's going on with AWS because there's always new stuff coming out and it's, it's, it's amazing. But this year it starts to see that there's an overlap or, or change between like the VMware ecosystem and now Amazon. There's a lot of our interviews are like, they're on both ecosystems, they're at Amazon's show, they're here. So you start to see what I call the maturization of partners. You guys are continuing to grow, and you'll probably still have thousands of announcements uh, at reInvent uh, this year, as you always do. But the partners are much more part of the AWS equation, not just we're releasing all these new services and, and oh, look, at, sure. look at us, look at Amazon, we're growing, because you guys were building out, and look, the growth has been great. But now, as you guys get to this next level, the partners are integral to the ecosystem. How do you look at that? How is Amazon thinking about that? I know there's been some, some a lot of active um, reorgs around AWS around solving this problem or no, solving the problem, addressing the need, and this next level of growth. What's your reaction to that? Well, I mean, it's, it's a it's a good point. So I have to be honest with you, John. I I, uh, I spent uh, eight of my ten years so far at a, a, AWS within the partner organization. So partners are very near and dear to my heart. We've got tens of thousands of partners, and you are, you're right, you're starting to see some overlap now between the VMware partner ecosystem and what we've built now in AWS. And partners are big By stories. the way, you sell out every reInvent, so you have a <laughs> lot of partners. I'm not suggesting that, you, that there's no partner network there. But partners yeah, but, are critical. I mean, oh, absolutely. Uh, naturally we want a relationship with the customer, but in order to scale the way we need to do, to meet the, the needs of customers, we need partners, right? We, we, can't, we can't interact with every single customer as much as we would like to, right? And so partners have long built uh, teams and expertise yeah. that, that caters to even niche um, workloads or opportunity areas, and, and we love partners for that. Yeah, I know you guys do, and also we'll point out, just to kind of give props to you guys on the partner side, you don't, you keep that top of the stack open on Amazon. You've done some stuff for end-to-end -end where customers want all Amazon, mm -hmm. but for the most part, you let competition come in even on so you guys are definitely partner friendly. I'm just observing more the maturization of partners within the reInvent ecosystem because we're there every year. I mean, it's. I mean, it's, first of all, they're all buzzing. I mean, it's not like <laughs> there's no action. There's a lot of customers there. It's sold out. It's big numbers. But it just seems that the partners are much more integrated into the value proposition of, at AWS because of the the rising tide, uh, and uh, and now their enablement because now they're part of the of the value proposition even more than ever before. They, they really are, uh, and, they're, and they're building a lot of capabilities and services on us, and so their customers are our customers, and like you say, it's rising tide, right? We, we all do better together. Okay, so let's talk about the VMware Cloud here. What's the update here in terms of the show? What's your, what's your main focus? Because a lot of people here are doing, doing sessions. Uh, what's been some of the con content that you guys are producing here? Yeah, so, uh, the best part, obviously, is always the customer conversations, the partner conversations, so a, 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 lot, of, a lot of sessions there. Um, we did a keynote yesterday, Narayan and I, where we talked about a number of announcements uh, that are, I think, pretty material now to the offering. Um, a joint announcement with NetApp yesterday as well uh, around the storage solution I was talking about. Um, and then some, some really good technical deep dives on how the offering works, 
customers are still interested in like how do I take uh, what I've got on premises and easily move it in AWS and uh, technology like uh, the HSX, HCX solution with VMware makes it really easy without having to re-IP applications. I mean, you know uh, it, it's super difficult sometimes to, to move an application if you've got to figure out where all the firewall rules are and re-IPing re those, those things of, uh, of source. But uh, yeah, it's, it's been fantastic. A lot of migrations to the cloud too, a lot of cloud action, new cloud action. You guys have probably seen an uptake on services, right, on the native side? Yes, yes, for sure. So maybe I'll just outline some of the, some of the announcements we made this week. So, Absolutely, uh, go ahead. We, uh, we announced a new uh, instance family as a, a major workhorse underneath the VMware Cloud offering called I4I. You mentioned Nitro earlier. This is on, based on our latest generation of Nitro, um, which allows us to offer, as you know, bare metal instances, which is, uh, which is uh, what VMware, actually VMware was our first uh, partnership and customer uh, that I will say actually drove us to really get Nitro done and out the door. And we've continued to iterate on that, and so this I4I instance. Uh, it's based on the, the latest Intel uh, uh, Ice Lake processor with more than double the RAM, double the compute, uh, a whopping 75 gigabits per second net network. So it's a real powerhouse. Um, the cool thing is that with the, with the NetApp storage solution that we, we discussed, we're now disaggregating the need to provision compute and storage at the same time. It used to be, if you wanted to add more storage to your vSAN um, uh, array that was on a VMware Cloud, yeah. you had to add another node. You might not need more compute or memory, but you'd have to add another node. And so now customers can simply start adding chunks of storage. And so this opens up uh, customers, I had a customer come to me yesterday and said, uh, there's no reason for us not to move now. Uh, we were waiting for something that, like this that allowed us to move our data heavy workloads yep. uh, into VMware Cloud. It's like, it's like the, the alignment, you mentioned alignment earlier. You know, I would say that VMware customers are lined up now almost perfectly with the hybrid story mm -hmm. that's, that's seamless, or somewhat seamless, and it's never so, truly seamless, but if you look at like what Deepak's doing with Kubernetes and open source, you, you guys have that there talking that big here, you got vSAN 8, vSphere 8 out, it's all, cloud native, so that's lined up with what you guys are doing on your services. And the horsepower, they have their stuff, you have yours, that works better together. So it seems like it's more lined up than ever before. What's your take on that? Do you agree, and, and if so, what folks watching here that are VMware customers, what's, uh, what's the motivation now to go faster? Look, it is, it is absolutely lined up. We are, uh, as, as I mentioned earlier, we are jointly engineering and developing this thing together. Uh, and then, so that includes um, not just the nuts and bolts underneath, but kind of the vision of where it's going. And so we're, we're collectively bringing in customer feedback. What is that vision, real quick? So that vision has to actually uh, help, and under, help uh, meet even the most demanding customer workloads. Okay, so you've got uh, customer workloads that are still locked in on premises, and why is that? Well, it used to be there migration. was a big need for data and migration, right, and the speed. Hassle. And so we continue to iterate this. And that, again, is a joint thing, instead of, say, VMware just building on AWS. It really is a, a, a tight partnership. Yeah, the lift and shift is an easy thing to do. And, 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 and by the way, that could be a hassle too, but I hear most people say, the reason holding us back on the workloads is it's just a lot of work, a hassle, making it easier is what they want. And you guys are doing that? We are doing that, absolutely. And by the way, we've got not just engineering teams, but we've got uh, customer support teams on both sides working together. Um, we also have flexible commercial options. So if a customer wants to buy from AWS because they've negotiated uh, some kind of deal with us, they can do that. Mm -hmm. If they want to buy from VMware, for a similar reason, they can buy from VMware. So are they in the marketplace? They are in the marketplace. There, there are some things in the marketplace. So you talked about Tanzu. Mm -hmm. There's a Tanzu offering in the marketplace. And so, yes, customers can con con contract. Yeah, marketplaces, I'm telling you, that's very disruptive. I'm really bullish on the market, AWS marketplace. I think that's going to be a transformative way people, how they procure and, and deploy and how and channel relationships are going to shift. I think that's going to be a disruptive enabler to the partner equation. And, and we haven't even seen it yet. We're going to be up there in September uh, for their uh, inaugural event. I think it's a small group, but we're going to be documenting that. Um, Steven, final question for you. What's next for you? What's on the agenda? You got reInvent right around the corner. Your OP1s are done, right? I know, assuming <laughs> yes. all that. Intern, that's, an internal <laughs> joke. that's an internal Amazon <laughs> joke, FYI. Um, you got your plan. 
what's next for the VM world? Obviously they're going to go this, take this, explore global. No matter what happens with Broadcom, this is going to be a growth wave with hybrid. What's next for you and your team with AWS and VMware's uh, relationship? Yeah, so both of us are hyper-focused on adding additional options, uh, uh, both from a, uh, an instance compute perspective, um, you know, VMware uh, announced some, some, some additional offerings that we've got we've to uh, fully complete. Like, so they announced things like uh, VMware Flex Compute, VMware Flex um, uh, Storage. Uh, you mentioned earlier there was a, uh, a conversation around ransomware. There's a new ransomware based offering. So uh, we're hyper focused on uh, rounding out, continuing to round out the offering and giving customers even more choice. Real quick, John, you made me think about the ransomware. Um, we were at Reinforce, Steven Schmitz, now the CSO, now mm -hmm. you got a CISO, AJ's the CISO, you got a whole focus, huge emphasis on security right now. I know you always have, but now it's much more public, uh, it's po more positive, I think, than some of the other events I've been to, it's been more gloom and doom. What's the security tie-in here with VMware? Can you share a little bit, real quick, on the security piece update around this relationship? Yeah, you bet. So. Um, as you know, security for us is job zero. Like, you don't have anything if you don't have security. And so, one of the things that, that we're excited about, specifically with VMware, is, is uh, the latest offering that that, uh, that we put together. And it's called um, this this ransomware offering. And it's uh, it's a little bit different than other ransomware. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people have ransomware offerings today. <laughs> Just air gap it, right? Right, right. Not exactly. that's easy. No, this one is different. So, on the back end, so within VMC. Uh, there's, there's this option where we can be, be taking iterative snapshots of a customer environment. Now, if an event were to occur, right, and a customer's like, I have to know if I'm compromised, we can actually spin up, super easy, this is cloud, remember? Yeah. We can spin up a, a copy Just of this environment, a pick a snapshot uh, with NSX, so VMware NSX, firewall it off, and then uh, use some custom tooling from VMware to actually see if it's been compromised or not. And then iterate through that until you actually know you're clean. Uh, and that's different than just tools that do maybe a little bit of scanning. We had Tom Gillis on yesterday, and, and one of the things Dave Vellante had to leave, taking his son to college, his last uh, one in the house, uh, NP Nester now, but Tom Gillis was on, we were talking about how good their security story is mm -hmm. with VMware, and they really weren't showboating it as much as they could have here. I thought they could have done a better job, but this is an example of kind of them really leaning, in, leaning in with you exactly. guys. That's a key part of the relationship. Yeah, it really is, and uh, I think this is something that is uh, materially different than what you can get elsewhere. Um, and it's exciting for customers. Okay, now, the, the real question I want to know is, what's your plans for AWS reInvent, the blockbuster end of the year, <laughs> uh, Amazon surf show uh, that gets bigger and bigger. I know it's still hybrid now, but it's going to be hybrid, but people are back in person last year. You guys were the first event really to come back and still had massive numbers. Uh, AWS uh, Summit in New York had 19,000. I heard last week in Chicago, big numbers. Um, so we're expecting reInvent to be pretty large this year. What are you, what are you going to be are, there? What's we, your role there? We are expecting, uh, well, I'll, I'll be there. Uh, I cover multiple businesses. Uh, obviously, we're, we're uh, planning on some additional announcements, obviously, in the VMware space as well. Um, and uh, one of the other businesses I run is around SAP, and you should look for some things there as well. Yeah, lo really looking forward to reInvent. Uh, Except for the fact that it's right after Thanksgiving. But I think, uh, I think it always ruins my, I always get an article out and like, why are you, we're having, a, we're having Thanksgiving dinner, I got to write this article, it's got to get Adam, Adam Schlesky exclusive. Uh, we, every year we do a, a CEO sit down with uh, Andy was the CEO and then now Adam. But yeah, it's a great event. To me, I think it sets the tone and it's going to be very interesting to see the big clouds are coming to the big cloud, you guys, I and mean, you guys are now called hyperscale, scalers, now multiple words. It's interesting, you guys are, providing the CapEx goodness for everybody else now, and that relationship seems to be the new, the new industry standard of you guys provide the enablement, and then everyone, you get paid because it's a service. <laughs> a whole nother level of cloud is emerging in the partner network, GSIs, other companies. Yeah, yeah I mean, we're really scaling. I mean, uh, we continue to iterate and release regions at a fast clip. Uh, we just announced support for VMware in uh, Hong Kong. Yeah. So now we're up to 21 regions for this service. The sovereign so, clouds right around the corner. Yeah. Let's, we'll talk about that soon. Steven, thanks for coming. I know you got to go. Thank you for your valuable Pleasure, time John. coming in. We put Steven Jones, who's the general manager of the VMware cloud on AWS business for AWS here inside theCUBE. Day three of CUBE coverage. I'm John Furrier. Thanks for watching. We'll be right back. <laughs>